Hello, I'm June Edwards and welcome to the third week of March. And as you can guess by my clothing, uh, I'm in full St. Patrick's Day mode. For me, it's St. Patrick's week because I have Irish blood in me, probably 20, 25%. And I love to celebrate this holiday. So uh, this is a good one, a good one coming up. Let's look at the calendar and get started, shall we? So March 14th, Sunday was the start of daylight savings time. It's the anniversary of the National Wildlife Refuge System. It's Pi Day, Pi meaning 3.14, which uh, you know is in math and it's not divisible by anything really. And also scientist Albert Einstein, born on the 14th in 1879. Looking at March 15th, it is the Ides of March, a very bad luck day, especially for Julius Caesar when he was ass assassinated on March 15th in 44 BC. The 16th is James Madison, our fourth president's birthday in 1751. And his beautiful wife, Dolly Madison, it was the belle of the ball in Washington, DC. And she's the one who snatched some valuables from the uh, Capitol before everything was burned to the ground by the British in the War of 1812. That's why we do still have an original portrait painting of, Wash of George Washington. Uh, the 17th is St. Patrick's Day, and we'll get into that in a little bit. It's the day the rubber band was invented. The 18th was the first walk in outer space in 1965, and it was when the invention Sparky the Fire Dog. Uh, became the hero of the firemen. And the 19th is when the Swallows returned to San Juan Capistrano. Uh, hopefully they'll be there this year because there's not going to be a lot of people there yet, although things are beginning to gradually reopen. March 20th, the first day of spring. And uh, Big Bird's birthday from Sesame Street. And one more for you on the 21st of March was when the first ever tweet uh, was made on Twitter in 2006. And whoever thought it would be powerful enough to censor even a US president and other notable figures around the world and have governments fearful about censorship by Twitter. Uh, Children's Poetry Day on the 21st, National Teenagers Day, and Single Parents Day, all on March 21st. Seems like a lot of things are being stuck on the calendar for the third week of March. So now, I'm going to put that calendar to the side. You can always find more notes on these different events if you go to the N-O-C-E dot edu website go to canvas the little circle icon with the red wheels looks like the steering wheel on a yacht or a big ship too and then you go into canvas and you go into the senior topics class for your facility and you'll see all kinds of notes uh, they're up there if you want to look at them they're up there for your pleasure your reading pleasure so let's start with blustery weather. You know, the Ides of March, an ill wind blows. Shakespeare wrote about the, the Ides of March and what a bad luck day it was. And it made me get out some science facts about the weather because as spring is roaring around the corner, we have had lots of wind and rain, 90% chance of rain overnight tonight. Oh my gosh. So let's look at some of these fun weather facts on our earth. Okay. The highest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica 
is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Recorded January 5, 1974. And that was when they said that the world was getting colder. Now they say the world is getting warmer. I don't think anybody's ever lived long enough to really know. The most rainfall ever recorded in 24 hours. Listen to this. 71.9 inches. Whoa. In Cherrapunji, India. Uh, I, I know that was January 8, 1966. So they had pretty accurate records at that time. Okay, the highest snowfall <clears throat> ever recorded in a one year period was, oh my gosh, 1,224 inches on Mount Rainier, Washington State in the United States between February 19, 1971 and February 18, 1972. It was in a one year period. Remember when they made that movie about New York City freezing over and these people are getting, the buildings are getting crushed by icebergs coming down from Canada and uh, forget exactly what year they made that movie, but they told us that we were headed for another ice age. Now they say that things are getting warmer and warmer. Yeah, the weather's so tricky, so tricky. Let's look at the fastest wind speed ever recorded 301 miles per hour. It was a three second gust recorded by a Doppler radar unit in Oklahoma City on May 3rd, 1999 in uh, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Wow. That's like twice the speed of a Stage five hurricane. What was the heaviest hailstone ever recorded? Oh my gosh. It was 2.25 hundredths of a pound and it landed in the Golpal Ganji district of Bangladesh, April 14th, 1986. My gosh, can you imagine that thing falling on your head? Probably have a flat head by the time it was done. Now, um, the earth experiences millions of lightning storms every year. Storm we had this past week had some lightning in it and thunder, and it was pretty close too. There are incredible discharges of electricity from the atmosphere that can reach temperatures close to 54 thousand degrees Fahrenheit and speeds of 130,000 miles per hour. There's no way you could outrun a lightning strike. I've also heard that in your average lightning strike, it has enough electricity in it to power a city of 500,000 people or more. Uh, that would be a good part of um, one of like Riverside County perhaps. Now, the United States has more tornadoes than any other country in the world and averages around, you're not going to guess this one. You want to make a guess? What's that you said? No, it's much more. 1,200 tornadoes a year in our country. It's a wonder that everything's not flat in what we call Tornado Alley. There is a unique geography which forms an area in central USA. It's called Tornado Alley, and it is frequently hit by tornadoes. Now, that includes places like Oklahoma, Mississippi, Kansas, where Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz had her house taken up by a tornado. And it's that whole central area straight up the middle of the country. I think I'm more afraid of tornadoes than I am of earthquakes. I guess it all depends on what you're used to. Tropical cyclones, which are often referred to as hurricanes in one part of the world. And uh, let's see, 
typhoons in another part of the world, feature strong winds, driving rain, rough seas, and areas of low atmospheric pressure. They frequently form in tropical areas of the globe and can do considerable damage to populated areas. The 1970 Bola cyclone, Typhoon Ninja, which hit China in 1975, and then more recently in 2005, remember Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana and New Orleans, which caused great devastation and loss of life also in parts of Mississippi, which were not publicized as much as New Orleans part. And they're still recovering. They're still rebuilding and still recovering from that. Okay, now I'm gonna move on. And I wanna talk about daylight savings time. Uh, did you know that in the spring, because you lose an hour of sleep, Statistics have proven since the 1970s when we started this whole daylight savings thing nationally that there are more heart attacks and more auto accidents uh, the day after you turn your clock ahead because of the lack of an hour of sleep. Now in the fall, it is the opposite. You gain an hour of sleep and so there are less heart attacks from stress and there are less auto accidents because people get more sleep. They sleep in more. I also found an interesting article on my smartphone. This week's top article, seven states that, you can't read it, I know you can't. Seven states, I'll read it to you, that are trying to ditch daylight savings time. And you know what? California is one of those states. And I say, go for it, babe, go for it. All right, what are the seven states? Well, every spring, people across the country set their clocks an hour ahead for daylight saving time. And then comes fall and we set them back again. It's a habit, but there's a lot of people who don't like it. My daughter says it takes her a week to get her sleep rhythm caught up. The concept did not originate in the United States. It originated in, guess where? Germany. In 1916, German troops turned their clocks forward in the spring as a way to ration fuel during World War I. The idea cut on elsewhere. And two years later, it was implemented as a wartime measure in the United States. Since then, resetting clocks in the spring and fall has become standard in all but two states. Hawaii and Arizona are the only state legislatures who chose not to adopt the practice when it was nationally implemented. Now, I thought it was nationally implemented in the 1970s. This is 1949, but I don't think that's right. I don't think we've had daylight savings that long. I could be wrong. I'll have to do some research on it. Despite its prevalence, daylight savings time is still a controversial subject, and I'm sure you have formed an opinion on it. Pending federal approval, states technically have the power to ditch the century old custom, and some are actively trying to do so. They're working towards ridding themselves of daylight savings time for good. First one, Florida. For two years, the Florida legislatures have had a bill in the works to end daylight savings time. And this has been championed by Senator Marco Rubio. He has a bill called the Sunshine Protection Act. It was passed in 2018, but it's still awaiting congressional approval. They would allow more daylight after school and working hours, especially during the winter, when access to fresh air and sunshine is crucial for keeping our immune systems healthy. Staying indoors is not such a good idea. As recently as September 2020, the Sunshine Protection Act was reintroduced on the federal level. But critics of the bill worry how the time difference will affect day-to-day -day business with other states. 
The second state is Washington State. They have legislation in the works that would eliminate the biannual time change for good. It met with enormous approval by both the state house and Senate, it was signed by the governor in 2019, but it will not come into effect until the federal level accepts it. The sponsors claim it would have multiple positive outcomes with more afternoon light leading to energy savings and increased public safety. Uh, they will have eight hours of sunlight on the shortest day of the year. And that's a good thing because up there they have, uh, winter comes a lot harsher and a lot earlier than down in California. The next state is Oregon. It's another state in the Pacific Northwest that wants to have permanent year round time. Their bill was signed into law in June 2019, but they still have more hopes to jump through. The federal government has to approve it and California and Washington must commit to the permanent time change as well. Most lawmakers think it will be beneficial for the entire region if all three states on the West Coast stay in the same time zone. Next state, California. California does want to stop resetting the clock. This has been led by Assemblyman Kansen Chu, been working hard to make the move to a year round standardized time. It was first introduced to the public in the 2018 election. Residents voted in favor, you remember that, of abandoning daylight savings time. Then Chu crafted a law that would move California ahead in March without ever having to fall back. The law initially succeeded in the assembly, but hit a few snags in our state Senate. The largest concern was the time change would hinder commuters from Mexico who cross the border daily to work in Southern California. Chu submitted another resolution in 2020 in hopes that he could get it passed one more time. Massachusetts, Maine, and New Hampshire also want to get it passed. So we'll see what happens. The federal government has to get on board with it too, I guess, since more than one state is involved. Pardon me while I get just a little sip of water. Now I want to talk about <clears throat> one of my favorite holidays, St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> I have my Celtic cross. I love stained glass. And this, this is just such a pretty, pretty items. I wanted you to get a good look at it. <clears throat> I have my leprechaun's treasure chest. I'll show you that in a minute. First, we'll do the serious part. Uh, March 17th is considered St. Patrick's birthday, although some people say that that is the day that he died. And he was not Irish, he was British. And some Irish pirates came over and raided his village and took back some of the able-bodied youth, including him, as a slave. Every culture has had slaves, so don't think that we're the only ones that ever had slaves. He was a slave. He had, he had to herd pigs, he had to take care of sheep. He slept out in the sun, the wind, the sleet, the cold, the snow. Uh, I have a picture of him later, but I won't show you that quite yet. He had a vision from God that uh, showed him in his mind an escape route where he'd have to go about 200 miles to get back to the Western Sea. I mean, on the, on the, um, it was the East Coast, but it was the sea that would lead him back over to the western shores of England. And he was able to get on a ship and work his way back. And a lot of his family was gone and the village had been burnt, a lot of it. But he did get back into the swing of things. And then he became, became a priest and later a bishop. And later he had another vision that where the Irish people were calling for him and begging for him to come back and lead them out of their dark superstitious ways. Here is a wonderful 
picture of what he may have looked like. You know, we don't have photos, of course, but people did paintings. And this is him. And behind him is part of uh, Ireland. He went back to Ireland to the same port that he had escaped through. And people, of course, tried to kill him several times because if you were an escaped slave, uh, your life was forfeit. But he was able to convert some wealthy chieftains and their sons, and they protected him. And he was very kind to people. They did a lot of things to help the people. And then they built a, a big cathedral. And during the Dark Ages, when the Picts and the Goths and the Visigoths and the other uh, barbaric tribes were sacking Rome and France and Italy and many different parts, Ireland was such an out of the way place that a lot of the works from Aristotle and Plato and those kind of things were somehow smuggled over to Ireland and the Irish protected them. And that's why we know what we know about the Greek civilizations and some of the Roman ones and the Book of Kells, which goes way, way, way back in time also. Uh, St. Patrick lived about the third or fourth century after the death of Christ. And it was during the time when the Roman Empire was collapsing and all the barbaric tribes were taking over the areas again. It was really amazing that the Irish became Christianized. It was not really Roman Catholicism at that time. Later on, the church became very powerful under Rome. But at that time, I would say Ireland was more on its own and had its own brand of Christianity. Now we have some fun facts. Uh, there's a lot of things about this day. The Irish are a fun-loving people. There is a town called uh, Limerick, and that's where a certain type of poetry was invented called the Limerick. Let me read it to you. Here's one by Michael Daly of Limerick, Ireland called St. Patrick's Day Limerick. St. Patrick was extremely bright, came to Ireland to teach what's right. To show he's no fake, he got rid of the snake. Now we all sleep much better at night. We know there really were never snakes in Ireland. It's an uh, island, but that is a cute one. Let's read another one. Alas, one beautiful moon fell in love with a male unicorn she purchased a spell recited it well now she's with him in with hooves tail and horn there once was a young man named sean whose wish came from a sly leprechaun to be surrounded by dough was what he wanted so in six months he was born as a fawn get it he's thinking dough like money dough and this was a dough which is a type of deer a man while drinking light bud crashed his car with a sickening thud. The car that he hit had a warlock in it. Now he lives as a frog in the mud. There once was a man from Nantucket who was poaching fish near Pawtucket. He found himself wishing to spend his life fishing and wound up in his minnow bucket. And there's other ones, and then there are blessings. You can get blessings, and uh, there's lots of things. Uh, <clears throat> trying to see what all I want to share here. The shamrock, you know, the three-leaf clover. Well, let you, me show you. My friend made this and gave it to me. This is supposed to be one of the pots of gold shared by the leprechauns. I want you to get a good look at everything in this little beautiful, beautiful, I have to put it back a little bit so you can see it, see all the work on it. There's green coins, there's beads, there's green and white flowers and coins and all kinds of things and shamrocks. You can see the shamrock there, three-leaf clover, it's supposed to bring you good luck. 
Yeah, of course, my mother, uh, her family comes from William of Orange. And so they always emphasized that the third color on the Irish flag, besides green and white is orange. So she says, always wear a little bit of orange with your green. Now, what about the shamrock? Let's see if we can read about that one. No symbol is more identified with Ireland than the tiny green plant, the shamrock. The word shamrock comes from the Irish word samrog, which means little clover. In 1620, Sir John Melton wrote, if a man walking the fields finds any four leaf grass, he shall while after find a good thing. Since then, the four leaf clover has been considered lucky. How about Irish and Celtic proverbs? And here's from an Irish angel webpage. True greatness knows gentleness. Have a mouth of ivy and a heart of holly. A man with loud talk makes truth itself seem folly. No heat like that of shame. No pain like that of refusal. No sorrow like the loss of friends. Death is a poor man's best physician. If the head cannot bear the glory of the crown, better to be without it. Face the sun, but turn your back to the storm. And without money, fame is dead. Who were famous Irish songbirds? The Clancy Brothers, the Dubliners, the Clannad, the Chieftains, Van Morrison, U2, the Cineot O'Connor, the Cranberries, Elvis Costello. And today, of course, we love to watch the Celtic programs on PBS and hear them sing and dance in front of the famous Irish castles. I hope you get to see one of those Celtic programs on St. Patrick's Day. An Irish blessing. May you always have walls for the winds, a roof for the rain, tea beside the fire, laughter to cheer you, those you love near you, and all your heart might desire. Oh, I love that. I love that. Don't you love that one? What else do I have? I do have some great toasts. If you're having ale or uh, the black Guinness, did you know that the, the dark beer Guinness was a mistake? Uh, it, there was a brewery in Ireland and they were brewing their beer and somehow it burnt and they threw it out. And when they threw it out, the poor people got it and they drank it and drank it. And some other people were watching them and said, why are they fighting over it? What's the matter with this? And they got the barrels and they opened them and they drank it. And now Guinness, it's a dark beer and it's one of the most popular in the world. Okay, now let's hear some uh, nice toast. And I've got my water. So with my Irish design on the cup, by the way. So may you have food and raiment a soft pillow for your head. May you be 40 years in heaven before the devil knows you're dead. The health of the salmon to you, a long life, a full heart, and a wet mouth. May the doctor never make a penny from you. Here's to you and yours and to mine and ours. And in mine and ours ever come, across you and yours. I hope you and yours will do as much for mine and ours as much as mine and ours have done for you and yours. Now that's a tongue twister. May you live to be a hundred years with one extra year to repent. May the Lord keep you in his hand and never close his fist on you. 
May the outside leaves of your cabbage always be free from worms. May you have warm words on a cold evening, a full moon on a dark night, and the road downhill all the way to your door. And in parting, I just want to give a special toast for those who on St. Patrick's Day insist on doing things. They might not do any other day of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. St. Patrick was a gentleman who through strategy and stealth drove all the snakes from Ireland. Here's toasting to its health. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week.